I wanted to say if you think they are not serious in a crime, wait till you get to Kumasi. Charlie they can actually call you on phone and bag in with you, like but gradually these are crap people move to Kumasi and influence these landlords and be like, Oh, your rent is too cheap. Just keep quiet. You came to braid your hair for hundred cities. Keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Like it's it breaks my heart because the last time I was telling one of my colleagues, I, I, I don't have any words of encouragement for them. But one thing that so they should go, they should go. <laughs> but one channel, how to get to Canada, how to get to the UK. Ah, we are tired. in 2024, that trend has to stop. stop. <laughs> Hi, lovely people, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl of what you do if you are new here do well to subscribe and join the lovely family i've got loads of lovely videos and even better ones coming up make sure to watch like share your thoughts with me and share with friends and family so in today's video i'm going to start a series which i have named surviving in ghana on this particular episode i'm going to interview an entrepreneur i don't want to spill too much without wasting my time let's get straight into action my guest today is ohiniwa who is the founder of ohinka basics with a clothing line located in kumasi welcome ohiniwa Thank you. Okay, what's your full name? Ahinoa Etise. And how did you get into this thing? It was passion, actually. I had to follow my passion because I've been through some comments that I wasn't really comfortable with. But I believed in my passion, so I decided to follow my passion. So, yes, passion for me. Can you share with us your background, educational background? Okay, so for primary school, I went to lots of primary schools. I don't even want to mention because I won't be done. But then JHS, I went to um, Mofatro, but I completed a Palma. And SHS, I was at Komodo, Mississippi High School. And University, I was in Catholic University College. If not for uni, I could say you were like a pure 100% Kumasi girl. Yeah, Kumasi based. I was asking because I wanted to know if you had struggles finding job after school and uh, that subsequently landed you into the field of fashion or right from the onset you knew that you wanted to be in the fashion space? Well, after school, I had a job, mm -hmm. right? Ghana is all about who you know. So through my dad, I had a job, okay, which was in the government sector, but I can't really disclose the place because it's very private. Thank you. But I was there for about two years and it was boring. Mm -hmm. It was boring because sometimes you could get to work and there would be nothing for you to do so i was like hmm, i actually have a dream to fulfill and i really want to follow that path so i decided to start doing it even though i was a salary earner but i actually had nothing but i decided to start the brand with nothing little to no idea and in the beginning it was how do i i think it was i was just having fun until two to three years later when i was like let me monetize this it looks really lucrative let's move to the real deal okay what everybody was interested because me and um, i just wanted to know or have your opinion on the current standard of living in Ghana. First of all, do you rent or you own your house and your means of transportation? Well, I don't rent. Mm -hmm. I have a house in... No, as in I have a house, but I live in my mom's house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, 
I do Uber and Bolt a lot. Okay. I don't have a car, so I do Uber and Bolt a lot. And that's quite sometimes very challenging because, like Uber, no, Bolt actually. When you order a ride, you budget for like 25 cities, it comes at 25 cities, you get there and it's around 45 cities. Mm. Imagine if I had just 25 on me when I was ordering the ride. I get there and it's more than that, so sometimes it's a bit challenging. But that's right. kind of for you. Yeah, the bones app itself, eh? <laughs> like... My experiences with them, I don't even know. Especially, let me no, this hold thing. on. Both in Kumasi, like if you think, <laughs> I want to say, if that you think they are not serious in Accra, wait till you get to Kumasi. Charlie, they can actually call you on phone and bag in with you. Like they don't take this down. No, and they call you. Oh, how much? How much did it come? Oh, it came twenty cities. Okay, pay twenty cities and let's go. Yes, they actually I like Charlie. I didn't even really understand what was happening, but like it's not a place I know very well, and so it's like sometimes I don't have, you don't have an option ride. when you uh, request for a ride, sometimes there are delays. So to wait and do the process all over again, you have no choice but to go with them. Actually, it's serious. So, what do you think about the current? standard of living in Ghana is it okay for you have you seen any changes um, right now the current state right now the current cost of living in Ghana is serious mm -hmm. like it's really serious it's way 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 up there and I think it all started from the so called year of return mm -hmm. Everything went from zero to hundred real quick. Mm -hmm. And now to stay in Ghana, even Kumat say that our uh, cost of living is down. God, only God knows. It's bad. I even wanted to ask you, so if you compare the cost of living in Accra to Kumasi, what do you have to say? Well, before you even answer, me, I am an Accra girl, right? So I'm an Accra girl. And people say Kumasi is like less expensive, but I can't say the same because I don't know. Maybe I don't know the spots. See, let me tell you something. Before this whole Accra Buhaha about cost of living, right? There, I mean, there was a time you could even get a rent for like 60 cities in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. But gradually, these Accra people move to Kumasi and influence these landlords and they're like, oh, the rent is too cheap, da 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 da, Accra, it's like this, it's like that. So they are also trying to be like the people in Accra. So even now, before you could get like 60 cities for a single room, now it's 200, 300, 500, which is, I mean, way, way, way up, not the Kumasi used to know mm. so sometimes i mean mom we have a black coma you guys talk too much hey, it is said that i have spa for no more we see about you but i maybe i bought me t20 dollars hey you may want to go to your car you better me that thing five thousand dollars like yo so do you think that it's more expensive to live in like that oh yeah them. obviously yeah it is it in is terms more, of what in terms of everything in terms of food water everything, everything. okay if i saw so you can spend like 10 cities and that's it across you can spend like 10 cities on what on food which food i don't know <laughs> 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 what do do? I need to eat <laughs> what's the effect of the economy on your business so the effect of the economy and the business the target audience right mm. so if we have some specific products for some specific people mind you if they are not getting well paid they don't have the excess money to spend mm -hmm. so that will make 
business a little bit slower for you yes. because we have wants and needs thank you right so w- when you get money like logically when you get the needs uh-huh. then later you can take care of your wants because want. your wants is not an emergency you can do without them okay so obviously when there's low income everybody focus on their needs okay and their demand and supply yes. to uh-huh. uh, demand go for so there's no demand but a lot of people are also making money seriously yes yeah, so yes but like, you see that's what people are saying so, as it looks like Ghanaians are magicians because when you ask people's salary now ocean salary need their life so i said it doesn't match mm-hmm. we say we don't earn much and we know that it's fact but then we are able to afford certain things like you know the iphones as you say the apple stuff really. if you are not using apple stuff you are not part of it on <laughs> apple stuff no maybe i won't come I and know, I, I how are go there. how I are people to. able to afford for this luxury stuff we are magicians a friend was like Muyo Juju. we are magicians because myself sometimes i ask myself how how i survive because mm. i mean there's a lot going on there's mm. a lot going on even though you would say oh she lives on her own but there's so much so much even electricity mm-hmm. water mm-hmm. those bills mm-hmm. are also going up each and every day so you you live with your mom so for it it's a plans where you don't pay but you spend on electricity yeah. send on I spend on everything so in house let's say because I'm average in a month how much you spend like how much you spend average in a month so for light every two weeks that's a 200 cities for every two weeks so mm-hmm. let's say 400 cities for the month mm-hmm. yes and then the water is it depends mm-hmm. so but the highest it has gone is 180 180 yes. let's say your transport and your food when it comes to transportation it depends on the others i get mm-hmm. Okay, most of the time, I but averagely, you don't have to be specific, but roughly, what well, how do you when you're budgeting for the month? So, so this, so this is it, right? I don't buy fabrics. Well, my my supplier actually passes in front of my house to his house. Mm-hmm. So when I need fabrics and I talk to him, he will drop them by my junction where I pick them up to my place. So it's easy for me to get fabrics sometimes. So it's not every month that I budget for transportation to get fabrics. And when you are sewing these things, when you buy these things, like you buy one yard, one yard, one yard, it won't help. Mm -hmm. So most of the time I buy in bulk. So there could be like two to three months I haven't even stepped foot in town. Mm -hmm. Unless it's very urgent for me to go get something, then I have to go. Okay. So that's the business side of things. But me, I was talking to me. I didn't clarify. I was talking about the personal side of things because we're talking about the amount you spend on electricity and yes. the amount you spend on water. Those are like personal stuff. Well, when it comes to so I just I just wanted I think, to know like I think it's only on Sundays. Mm-hmm. On Sundays when I'm going to church. church. Yes. And most of your things, you have your. Your workshop and everything around you, so you don't want to do any out. Okay, and what else do you spend on? Let's say maintenance, beauty stuff. Hmm, maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beauty stuff is all okay. Oh, that's very expensive. Yeah, so, Abedi, how much do you spend on that in a month? So, in a month, washing my hair. I think it, it will just be washing my hair and my nails that has to amount to like 350 cents. Mm-hmm. That's just washing my hair. And hey, no, I'm not there random. They're they're random. Nah, I can't do it every month. No. Okay, then that means you 
Yeah, okay, you don't spend so much. No, so I much. try I try to I try to live in my own box. Mm-hmm. I don't I, I, I don't like to do stuff out of the box. Mm-hmm. I've learned you that really time. Yeah. With everything that you're saying, it means that for you your earnings is enough for your daily not up to but we manage we are just later we have been the other side business i do sell fabrics to me yes my mom sells fabric and then i help her with that so okay so you help them you get some extra from them yeah okay so let's say you have two sources of income mm-hmm. if you are giving twenty thousand dollars today then i'll be there twenty thousand dollars mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> I have a goal this year, right? Mm. I need a showroom. So I think that would be my first priority mm. when I get that money. Mm. And the second one is to train people mm. for free. Wow. Yeah, for free. Because I believe people do have their passion, but they don't have the money to go elsewhere to learn these stuff mm. even though you can be self-taught but there are things you still have to have little knowledge about mm. it's not that easy but yes so mm. that would be the second thing i'll do that's nice to hear and i'm surprised you didn't say you want to jump on like that because i wanted <laughs> to ask you that's so i don't want to ask you before yes i'm actually doing a costume oh. so I guess it's a memo that's the other day. I'm not a fan of the Japan. Yes, I'm not a fan of it. It's a dozen in Kenya wana because Charlie, who to be friend or damn friend, or to now be friend or out of coverage area, or friend or what's up, I hear no way. It's so many calls. Hey! Hey, my makeup artist. By the name, by the end of sound. I saw her on Saturday. So I was calling her on Monday to ask her, oh, will you be available for me on Wednesday? She was like, you know what? I'm not here. I'm like, so where are you? She's like, oh, I'm in Canada. I'm like, hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Did I just not see you? See, uh, I left in the next two days. So, ding, ding, ding. Then she was asking me, when are you coming? I'm like, eh? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> so, what do you think is the cause of this? What do you have to say about what is happening? The youth is suffering. Mm. To be honest, we are really suffering. That's why lots of people are frauding, people are stealing. The system doesn't really work. But some are some are also saying that we are we are lazy. We are not. You should actually wake up one one morning and just go stand at the bus stop and just see something. See how the youth are struggling to get into church or just to go to work. Do you think they are lazy people? Mm. And see how someone has like hundreds of applications going up here and there for interviews and mm, because he or she doesn't know anyone, they don't get the job. It's a sad situation. That is what is pushing mm-hmm. a lot of people. So the person gets away, oh, me do a car with you. They will go. Mm-hmm. Even to be a cleaner. I mean, I'm not disrespecting cleaners, but it's better than being here. Than being idle. And being idle. Mm-hmm. That's a better job. Yeah. So I, I think that it's sad, right? It's sad. Very and sad. You know, our leaders have failed us. Like you have so much expectation. They write so many lovely things in their manifestos. And mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times they come into power and fail us for some reason. Maybe when you are rich, you say, oh, this person will bad. Things will look better or things will turn around. But it, it looks like they are all the same. I also strongly believe that they are just a representation of the people at the bottom. That's what I always see. Because Ghana mm-hmm. any any power or nonsense or all the words you want to hear or they can't be natural. 
then now if you give a person power, that's where you see proper shady. So I feel like the people up there, they are true representation of the people that are at the party. And also look at the way you hear politics now. Even um MPP for your more prime is not me for me follow almost it was all over the the news because as the on the bound there's a lot of friction back and forth. It's the almost when you say almost interview will be no see or see it yeah on one to ma um papa rap and anything. But all the about me and about anything. Kennedy. Or say or two more Kennedy because on no crown or no crown on ya be or no crown like on yet vice president and only position here or government. Or no to me man is the two fifty. Exactly. Now about me or no one be one more man at three fifty and I be bisa comparison besides or no they are all man is cut the same or no more yet. Or two man. So can you imagine if you have to spend just much Oh no, yeah, just one person. No, say say say, oh my, prime is me, your man, your man. Me dey be need say your man. You see, I want stages. So you pay all these people. Now if I dey be this one, so of course, or best as a fortunate. And uh, those that did favors and supported him, oh my, you like they have to be paid back in one way or the other, in kind. So. Like it's it's really I don't know one of the things that we share about Ghana. Like it's it breaks my heart because the last time I was telling one of my colleagues my experience at one of the government agencies, I don't want to mention the name. In do you know that I woke up early in the morning to go to this place to get a document? Right? And I just asked for assistance because they were directing me to different offices and because i don't know the rooms i was asking oh please I'm, i've been directed to go to room so so and so where do i pass or where do i go or oh, pass it pass it so i was going up and down so this young guy saw how i was going up and down he said oh let me help you he didn't say it, but i think that was the intention he took the documents and then he led me i was i went there very early because I know that that place can be very cheap, so I went very early. Then payment and so on. Then I'm going to start going so. I hear na me tia. Anya me go na me bisa. He said, oh, and then my miss Carol na me here then. Me go to your mom. Na me bisa. So how much should I give? He said four hundred and fifty. I said ah. But the thing that I was doing, the document I was working on, I'd already um done the process before, but a chemo. It was about. Three or four years ago, right? So I knew the process, and that time I I did it myself too. I didn't ask for um, any good person to help, right? I went to the government organization, and then just I was just as I was doing, I was asking, "Please, where do I go in the field, right?" And then I was directed. I did everything, and at that time I was one hundred and something. So now when the guy said for me, I said, "Ah." But you know, so I started blaming the guy. I said, Ah, now government, I didn't have a beer or more taxi answer because I did my baby. I told him, and I had the receipt, I showed it to him. I said, I've, I've been here already, I've done this before, and this is the amount I paid. And just after two or three years, this is uh, the amount we have to pay now. And he said, Oh, no, that's not the real amount now. You will have to sort some officers out to fast track the police. I said, What? I said, the last time I came, <laughs> I came here, I did it myself. I didn't have to pay anybody. I said, don't worry. You, you wait forever if you don't pay. I said, don't worry. I don't want to waste your time. So please hand over the document and then let me continue for when you've reached. And then I thanked the guy and said, don't worry. You go back to the office. I don't want to waste your time. So let me just continue with the process. I took the document. Amy, I know. I went with Mantia Zero Ghana, Mantia One Ghana City. Office B and B Samishri in a day. They call banks and they can't make it in time. Two hundred and fifty times two hundred and six and a half. Hey, I don't know. It's an open two 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 two. I didn't know me by any crown. Two hundred and some, two hundred and six, so two hundred and ten. 
Ooh, Baba J. Two point five, two hundred and fifty was so. I could do quite. Oh, bro, me and pa. I am a chi. Because I wanted the process to be fast, right? I went to the main office, and I I live in at that time I was coming from Tema, so I left the house at dawn just to get there that early. And I'm a coin, so I went to sit there for a while to wait for the boss. I wasn't sitting in the house and asking for help. I actually went there myself. Now on that premises, no. On your guru guy, government agency, you work there. Or just 450. For a dear year 206. I didn't have to pay anything apart from Sasi Kana Miko to Yama government. Hey. We were like seriously, I was so sad. And I said, when those at the top do it, you complain. Look at what we are doing. Even on our streets, when we are driving, drivers know, especially the trotro drivers. Mm -hmm. They want to mafia you. You are not even a commercial vehicle. Oh nam ne quine baby. But for him to wait for you to go. He won't. He won't. As if you are also a commercial driver, if he lets you go, you are going to get all the passengers. Mm, we all have to fix up. Guys, they will just force their way in just to stop two seconds after. In this time, I'm in a train, say, this is a we attitude. Seriously. It's not just about the politicians, it's not just about the leaders, it's not just about even the system. The system is there, but it's not working. Who has to make the system work? We. We have to fix ourselves. Okay. Any last words on the current situation? And what do you have to say to the Ghanaians that are Japan here and there? One, for the any Ghanaians that are Japan. I don't have any words of encouragement for them. But one thing that they, so they should ring, go. They should go. <laughs> but one thing that pisses me off is when they go, they start a YouTube channel. How to get to Canada? How to get to the UK? Ah, we are tired. In 2024, that trend has to stop. stop. <laughs> it has to stop. How to get to Canada? I out, you know. Hey, hey, Missy. Hmm. Hmm. Better jump on the phone here in your sky. Hey. British Council on who was your one of what red fruits? We have to be a threat and and it was recently that I got to know that that exam actually expired. Yes, it expires. I think after two years. Yeah, after two years it expired. Mm. Oh, what red fruit? Five hundred dollars. Ah, guys, me, I'm a confused girl. I don't know if I want to stay or I want to I jump back. I you don't want to want to go. I don't. I hey. want to go on holidays and come back to Ghana. Ah, that's the nice hey. thought that I want. This one, dear, this is big, big girl lifestyle. That's the lifestyle that I want. I want to go for holidays. I go, I go to a place like India. I get fine fabrics, then I come back. I go to Vietnam. I meet some people fabrics i meet you know i learn a skill mm. this i mean they have good tailors mm. and they are very good in tailoring as well mm. in vietnam mm. so yeah you've done mean, your um, research yeah i've done my research what about zanzibar 2024 hi <laughs> <laughs> zanzibar 2024 mm. Mm. it's coming on live and color too mm. yeah this time around yeah, it is coming on. all right Thank you so much, Ahinka, for gracing our show. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and share your social handles. Oh, Ahinka everywhere. Ahinka, I don't do Facebook, so my website is Ahinka, www.ahinka, www.ahinka.com. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, it's just Ahinka, O-H-E-N-C-A, that's the name. Thank you. Guys, just by she coming here to chit chat and you know have this great conversation, make sure you go and follow. Okay, do the need for and share her handles. And subscribe her to her post. YouTube channel. Thank you very much.
on that note, yeah, Kramo will be out. I hope you picked a thing or two from here. For her, she did Ghana for life. She doesn't have plans of relocating. What about you? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. Let's engage there. I'll see you on another episode. Makram, I'm out. Bye-bye.